Welcome to the bold analysis. In this podcast, I want to do something unusual that I've, I've always veered off from doing and speak straight to power. William Ruto must outrightly deal with lying cabals in government. That's what I see. He must deal with people who are either, not even either, people who are lying to him. You choose to it, choose it, or leave it. But there are six lying cabals in government. And I want to look at this critically. Because what has actually been happening for, for some time, um, we've been saying about... Um, We've been talking about the deal makers. Um, uh, uh, deal, deal makers. These six uh, lying cabals are actually the team that are actually dragging power, dragging, slowing down UDA. Kindly subscribe to our channel. And because we're going straight into that, I want to remind you about this fundraiser early enough because I want us to get uh, this is Sarah. Oh my goodness, yes. So Sarah, we lost Sarah finally. For those who know her, yeah, we, we had supported her last year, a medical bill, and uh, she suffered acute leukemia, but by the wish of the Lord, she rested the other side on 26th of June. The interment is slated for this weekend on 26th in Siaya. For members of the ball that are willing, you can get to me if you're within Siaya and you can tag along with us. Ball family, I would, I would actually uh welcome you and we are doing the last mile last expense challenge and book challenge to help offset the bills um, last expense and also the welfare for the boy that is remaining there and uh, that is why we are doing this we are actually finishing tomorrow on wednesday so that we can uh, do much of that planning from thursday six lying cabals number one there is um, a MUFAS group calling themselves Economic Council. That Economic Council is led by David Day. I am so disappointed by that council because I want you to use a very good example. There was an overhyped uh, deal, overhyped oil deal. But now it is now turning clearly that uh, the salesmen fueling the oil the oil the lie on the petroleum deal lied to the president these people told william ruto that they had got a super deal from heaven that we are going to buy oil on credit and there's a lot of textbook economics there of it's going to slow down the demand for dollar then our shilling will stabilize because we're using a lot of money into getting these dollars uh, into into imp for, for importing and then we're also going to stabilize the prices of uh, the prices of oil then that was in march two months later that economic council also added the president to have 16 percent vat on fuel what has happened the ambition to lower the cost of fuel has not been met the plan has not been met so this team this team of uh, economic council if you ask me it is just another layer the emirati oil deal is actually one that indicates that this team lied to william ruto yes they lied while in Jagana. It has not. So, months later, two months to starting payment because that oil was on deal, was on, was on credit, government has been forced to go to start begging the Dubai nation to allow us to renegotiate that deal. So, what, what's going on there? We failed in it because William Ruto was misled. It was misled that that was a very good solution. 
So that team, because if you ask me, <clears throat> Uhuru Kenyatta did not have um, economic cancer. But yes, Uhuru Kenyatta had advisors, economic advisors. And, and in terms of economic advisors, let me tell you, in the office of the deputy president, there is an economic advisor, office of economic advi advisory. Ugo Kwa Salem Davadi, there is economic advisory. In the president's office, there is economic advisory. In treasury, then this council. So this council is a consortium of, it's some kind of an office that have a direct access to the president because the president had actually put a pet program of resuscitating or rather reviving the economy. Number two. <clears throat> There is the fertilizer subsidy squad. <laughs> I'm using the fertilizer subsidy squad because there is a squad of, you know, I don't know if it's the ministry. This squad, let me call them a squad. This squad have been um, are telling probably <clears throat> government bloggers and the intelligence team to and the president to come out and hype. And I've seen <coughs> deputy president coming out and hype that we have bumper harvest. We gave farmers fertilizers, subsidized fertilizer. And because we gave them subsidized fertilizer, there's a bumper harvest. And because there's going to be bumper harvest, the cost of maize will go down. More. This quote is lying. The cost of maize is, will be commensurate to the cost of production. What I'm saying is this. <clears throat> you just gave fertilizer, fertilizer subsidy, which also did not get to all the farmers in the country. It was given on some framework. And even at that, the fuel is still high. The fuel that was used for plowing the land is high. And that was at the time of planting. Now, even if you just offered one incentive, which was a fertilizer subsidy, but as we speak now, while the farmers are harvesting, the cost of transporting that maize from the farm, even to the granary, or even to the millers, the cost is high. Because the price of fuel is high. Look at what the Transport Association was saying. They are hiking the cost of transport by almost 30%. Now, if currently there is inflation in other costs, even if you offered fertilizer subsidy, I'm telling you, the cost of transportation logistics is going to be taken to the consumer. And so, I'm saying they are lying to William Ruto because William Ruto and Rigeli Gashok have come out in public and are saying, promising Kenyans that maize, the cost of maize will go down because we've had some bumper harvest. And this bumper harvest is because of subsidized fertilizer. And by the way, there's nothing special with subsidized fertilizer. The direct correlation between a subsidized fertilizer and bumper harvest is, is not there. They're simply trying to, um, to give credit to the fact that we subsidize the fertilizer. But whether it's subsidized or not subsidized, it's still suffers fertilizer. What might have changed is maybe the rain pattern changed. And maybe there was better rain pattern compared to other previous years. If indeed there is bumper harvest. Bumper harvest cannot be attributed to the fact that fertilizer was subsidized. Because large-scale farmers were using fertilizers even before it was subsidized. So... After one year by December, if the cost of maize will go down, will not go down, I don't know how William Ruto will come there to defend. You'll realize that what he has said is not what is happening. Third group. This is Rigadi Geshagwa. <laughs> what, what do you think? Why do you think Rigadi Geshagwa is lying to Ruto? Currently, there is a debate going on in this country. Kithure Kindiki, who is in TSCS, is saying, look here, guys. When a protester is not armed, that protester, police should not bother with him or her. In fact, he should be escorted to protest, show his 
dissatisfaction with government, then the end of the day will go home. But again, Geshagwa, as a man who grew through the ranks in the civil service, is hands on this security aspect. And you see, in the past, he will wake up at 5 a.m. allegedly to fix the nation. And that was in respect to this issue of, uh, of security. So someone is lying. The reason why I'm saying the guy is lying to Ruto is that you need to suppress these protests. And the best way to suppress this protest is unleash the police. You know, the guy on record saying, leave them to me, leave Azimio to me. You know, he's, he's, way back, some time back, he used to say, leave Azimio to me. And someone is, uh, and, and this why he's lying to Ruto is because you cannot suppress the people. You only have two options. You cannot, you cannot suppress. You just have to impress. And that is, Meguna told Ruto, don't argue with the people. The people are right. So that is the division, the divide on quelling protests, on the way uh, the protests are actually handled, is a misadvice. I wish they would buy what Kendiki is saying. Because all of us are waiting for the day people are going to protest and at the end of the day people go home. But whenever there is, whether they have a, a, a you know, until I'm seeing as me, I've not sent in their, I've not applied, I've not notified the police. But then they're saying there's a protest on Wednesday, which is, I think it is tomorrow, if I'm not wrong, the day after tomorrow. So what is happening here is very clear that people are reading from different scripts. The other part, the other group and the other person lying to William Ruto is a bunch of political strategists. This is another sacred, this is another sacred group. This sacred group are telling William Ruto that as you plan for your re-election, bolster the visibility of UDA, put money in the UDA party, let them do grassroots mobilization, let people have your caps and your shirts in the streets, and also go and kill that jubilee party so that you can have a strong party strength, a strong party behind you. I'm not dismissing the need for a strong party. I'm not dismissing that. But I want to question it this way. Do you think Ruto got votes because he was a UDA candidate? Or he got votes, for example, in Mount Kenya? Did he get the votes he got, even in the other, country, in the other regions, because of UDA or because of himself as Ruto? This is what this cabal must realize. Even if you will put Ruto in a very white gown, and try to resell him as a saint in the next general election. The message is out there that Ruto lied to the people. And are they not the ones that have been saying, we want issue-based politics. Let us be judged on what we have done. We've been allowed to judge the president on that ground. But this cabal have now reinforced Ruto uh, po uh, political uh, transition politics by making sure that uh, from other factors or other players by making sure that you kill party democracy this cabal have told Ruto go and buy those ODM MPs I'm using the word buying because they were bought go and buy those ODM MPs go and kill that jubilee party then pump money that grassroots mobilization it doesn't matter for now I can say it will not be about which party yes it will not be about which party. Don't get shocked if Gadono Mushomba jumps, is denied UDA ticket, but goes to an election with another ticket, another small party, and gets that seat. That's normally what happens in Kisi. You'll realize. Second last. <laughs> there is a deal called Dubai Makers. That deal is by Moses Kuria. How many visits and trips has Moses Kuria made to Dubai since he became a CS for industrialization and trade. 
And this is this Dubai deal makers, huh? these are the fellows that will flash very big posts in their social media pages about how Kenya has gotten into some MOU to export, I don't know what, to Dubai, and they get to export this. But in real sense, these deal makers, the business squad, are actually, explo are actually exposing Ruto negatively. Why? The edible oil deal that Nidia raised alarm about painted government as corrupt. And these deal makers is a high table with very big and connected fellows that some few people that might also be close to power are not benefiting. Last group is Raila Lynch Squad. Raila Lynch Squad is MPs, vocal members of parliament, I'm talking about the Kimani Chungwa, that call president in the night or post, get strategies in the WhatsApp groups, that tomorrow, because they're protesting, let's attack Raila. Raila is the problem. Let's go after him. So you'll hear Malala rise, waking up and say, you know what? Raila should be arrested. Chererge is saying, you know what? Raila should be arrested. And they are lying to the president to hide behind Raila Dinga that I know things are bad. Duto knows things are bad. Kenyans are complaining about the cost of living. But instead of confronting that question, you should actually hide behind Raila and talk about Raila Dinga. The challenge about that is this. You rather face me and tell me the truth that, hey, Kenyans, things are bad. I know the cost of living is high. I know it has caused problems. But just listen. Let's get it right. We really need to think about this. So that they're lying, but the public, the more they're attacking Ray Lodinga, the public is now seeing, you know, when, when, when you're talk, he becomes the agenda. And the public then move towards on his side on or on his defense. These six groups are really to blame. And look at the housing fund. Economic, I don't know where it falls. Look at the housing fund crusaders, affordable housing crusaders. Affordable housing crusaders knew, know very well you cannot solve. They know that the issue about housing is not going to be solved by government. The government is not going to build people houses. It's not going to solve the, the, the employment question conclusively. But they're just putting up a brave face saying, you know what? It is what it is. That's my bond.